Good morning. Welcome to our worship services here at Charlotte Heights this morning. Good to see everybody who's here. I know there's uh, several following online. Glad you're with us as well. A uh, couple of announcements this morning. Uh, certainly we want to be mindful of Paula Fleming and her family uh, and the death of her husband, uh, Ralph, on Friday. Uh, we don't have the arrangements uh, for that uh, funeral at this time, and, and we'll share that as soon as we have it, but we certainly want to remember them in our prayers. Uh, a few birthdays this week. Ronnie Hirschbrunner, who's my much older cousin. Happy birthday to him. Uh, John Green and Patsy Fye all have birthdays this week. And uh, Bobby and Andrea Green and Jimmy and June Roberson have anniversaries this week, so certainly want to wish them uh, a great week to enjoy those celebrations. Let's begin our worship with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as always, we're grateful to be together and, and to enjoy fellowship and time to praise you and worship you. Just ask that you'd be with us this morning as we do so. We pray that you be with those who are sick and not able to be here and that you will bless them with a speedy recovery and that they would be back with us soon. We're certainly mindful of the Fleming family. Just pray that you would uh, surround them and help us to surround them and provide uh, strength and encouragement that they need at this time. We pray that you be with Josh as he brings our lesson this morning that will be encouraging and challenging for us and that we would apply the things that we learn throughout the week. We pray that you be with us throughout our worship, that we will do things that are pleasing to you, uh, Lord, and we know most of all that we have everything that we have uh, through Jesus and through the gift of him coming to earth and living a life here and dying on the cross. We're so grateful for that, and we ask all this in his name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be back. I feel like I haven't been here in a month. Um, so it's good to be back up here, leading singing with you guys again. Um, let's all stand for this first song. <clears throat> Oh, victory in Jesus. 
You may be seated. Come we that love. next song let's sing all three verses and then the chorus all three verses and then the chorus This time, as the example in the New Testament gives us, we're going to meet around the Lord's table. That's what we come here for, to, to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. 
If there's anybody that didn't receive a Lord's Supper packet at this, at this time, would you raise your hand and we will have somebody to bring one to you? As Jesus was getting ready to be crucified on the cross, he set forth this, this supper or this, this feast or uh, at the time of the Passover for us to, to remember him by. It has to do with the, the bread that we will be taking this morning. It has to do with the, his body that was crucified and was hung on the cross and was, and was tortured by the, the most cruel death that it could be. And also the, the fruit of the vine we take this morning, of course, represents his blood that was shed there, the blood that uh, forgives our sins. As we, before we partake of the bread this morning, let's bow and pray. Most high and holy God, we're so privileged and honored to meet around your table this morning. Father, the sacrifice, the blessing the, of Jesus coming to this earth and dying on the cross, living as man and dying, and Father, being raised from the dead, is, we're so thankful, Father, that that can reconcile us with you. Almighty God, we thank now the bread which represents his body as he hung on that cross and was crucified for us. Father, we ask that you would help us to think back to the cross and remember this as we partake. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. bow again with me. Father, we realize that as Jesus hung on that cross, his precious blood was shed. Father, the blood that washes our sins away. Father, we're so thankful for this sacrifice. Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we ask that you help us think back to, to this time and, and the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll go ahead and take up our contribution this morning. Uh, we are also commanded to give on the first day of the week. Uh, there'll be some men coming down the aisles if, uh, to, to take this up at this time. If you'd bow with me, please. Most high and holy God, we're so thankful for every blessing. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from you, as your word tells us. Well, we're thankful that we live in the country we live in, a rich country. Well, we're thankful that we have the ability to make a living and do the things that you have us do. Father, we owe all this to you. Father, we ask you you would bless us now as we give back a portion of this. And Father, we ask that you would help us to give in the manner that you would have us give, Father, from the heart. And Father, especially we would ask that these funds be used to further your cause in this community and throughout the world, Father. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Will you pray with me, please? Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this time we can gather together and praise and worship you. Lord, we pray that our worship is pleasing to you, Lord, and we do it all in spirit and in truth. God, we pray that as we leave here today, that we would go out into the world and share the gospel with those that do not know it. God, that we would not let this church be confined by these walls, but rather we would be your hands and feet to the world. We pray for those that are affected uh, by the recent flooding. We pray for those that uh, lost lives and their families. God, we just pray your blessings upon them, the difficulties that that brings them, and we just pray your comfort and peace upon them, God. We pray that they would be comforted by you and they would look to you during these difficult times. Lord, we know there's a number of ours that are sick and we pray your blessings upon them as well. We ask that you heal them and bring them back to us. God, we are just so thankful uh, for everything you give to us. God, you bless us so richly and it's far more than we deserve, God. Just Christ on the cross was more than we could ever repay, God, and we are constantly grateful for that. Lord, again, we just ask that you would um, be with those overseas in the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, just bless those people, help them to uh, be safe, bring them home to their families. We pray for the families of uh, the servicemen that lost their lives this week. We pray your blessings upon them too, Lord, and just that you would uh, just give them the peace and comfort that only you can. God, we pray that there's so much going on in this world right now, Lord, and we know that you are the answer. We pray that we would stay strong in our faith to fight despite the difficulties that may come and that you would help us scoot through these difficult times. God, again, we thank you for everything you do, most of all for Christ on the cross, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's all stand for this song and remain standing for the reading of the scripture. <clears throat> oh, thou fount of every blessing, move my heart to sing thy praise. Dreams of mercy never ceasing, all for songs of boundless praise. chapter 5 verses 9 through 11 
Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God, and I also trust we are well known in our, your consciences. You may be seated. We have been looking for this month, considering the hard way and what that means and the easy way. And we've been looking at entitlement and what entitlement is and the plague of entitlement. I deserve, I want, I'm owed. I'm in my 20s, but I feel like I should have the same stuff as my parents who are much older. We looked at from Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, where Jesus says in the English Standard Version, enter, the, enter by the gate, for the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are, are many. And then he also says, enter by the narrow gate, for the way, the way is hard that leads to life. And those who enter by it are few. We've looked at the difference between saying I deserve to saying I'm responsible. I'm responsible. We talked about the motivation that we need to press on. This morning I want us to conclude this series of the hard way by looking at the other Side and that is this, I am accountable. I'm accountable. Let me ask you something, what is one thing that you would improve the effectiveness of Charlotte Heights? Does anything come to mind? When I say to improve the effectiveness of Charlotte Heights, I'm not talking about the pews, I'm not talking about the lighting, the air, the walls. I'm talking about us. What, what would it be? Another question to consider is this. What we say among ourselves here with our brothers and sisters, does it match what we say about Charlotte Heights at home. There's an old saying, who, you know, that, that about blaming, that there's a poor sailor that, that blames the wind, a, a, a poor worker blames the tools, a poor coach blames the players, a poor player blames the coach. But what about in the church? Who does a poor leader blame? Who does a poor preacher blame? blame. Who does a poor member blame? If you don't get anything else, it's this in question that you need to ask yourself based on what John read from us. And it's a very piercing question. It's, and it's not profound. It's just very simple. Who do accountable people blame? Think about that. Who do they blame? People that are accountable, who do they blame? There's a book that's out there, that's been out there for quite some time by the name of Jim Miller, who wrote it. It's called QBQ, Question Before the Question. And the whole premise of this book is this, that, that it's, it's about asking better questions to create better choices. And anything in life, it, it, it's, it, it applies. If you think about parenting, why, why doesn't my child do what I'm telling them to do? You know, no, you know, why is it that we constantly keep going over the same thing? Maybe the better thing to ask is, how can I improve as a parent? What can I do to lead them in this transition of life? 
What about in marriage? You know, why does, why does he or she always bring up the past? They can't get past the past. When, when will, will he or she ever listen to me? What about this question? How can I be a better spouse today? What can I do to get us to moving forward? I mean, look at anything in life. <laughs> I think about volunteering, and that's church work, isn't it? We volunteer. Well, why do I have to do everything? Why, why, why is everything left up to me? What about this question? How can I, how can I establish better boundaries so that I can say no more? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. No. You know, when we look at another book, and it's the book, it's filled with personal accountability. In this verse that was read again by John, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and that each one, that's you, that's me, that's not the person who should be here and listening, that's not just for them, that's for us who are listening. We receive the things that we've done in our body according to what we have done, whether good or bad. We are all held accountable before our God. We must give an account. And not one verse, just that one verse alone teaches us whether we want to embrace it, whether we want to accept it, whether we want to ignore it, it doesn't matter. It's still the facts, and that is we are accountable. I am accountable. If you have the bulletin, I have some notes that you can look at and some questions you can answer and invite you to join along. But the first point is this. I am accountable by asking better questions. Let me tell you something that is so human nature and so easy. We catch ourselves doing it. I've been guilty of doing this. Listen to me. When I, when I preach lessons, you really stepped... Guess what? I stepped on my toes too. I need to hear this too. But we hear a lesson. We read a book. We go to a seminar. And we think to ourselves, somebody else who needs to do this. Who needs to hear this. We hear a lesson and we think this person should have been here because this lesson pertains to that person. Let me tell you something, folks. If the word is presented, let me tell you who it applies to. Everyone. Everyone. It's not just the people who are not here. It's not just the people who are stuck on, uh, on first base. It's not just, it, it, it's for all of us. And we need to apply that for what we need to do. You know, if you look in Mark chapter 9, this is just in one place. In Mark chapter 9, the disciples, I wonder if they could have asked a better question than the question that they asked. Would they have learned the lessons that Jesus was teaching them a little bit sooner than a little bit later than they did? When Jesus took Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration, he came back and the disciples were disputing among others. And what they were disputing about, we get to figure out, because there's a man that brought his son that was possessed. He was convulsing and everything. And, 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 you know, Jesus intervenes here, and Jesus, you know, exercises the demon. You know, he heals the son. And the disciples, much later, asked Jesus something. Look at verse 28. When they came into the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast out the Spirit? In the book QBQ, it says, stay away from, if you can, as best you can, questions that begin with why, who, or when. What we should be asking in better questions is what 
in the how. What, what would have happened? What, what, how would it have changed? Jesus tells them, this one can only come out of fast. He gives them an answer, but, but maybe in this scene, what if they would have said, what can we do better as disciples? How can we be better followers? Instead of the why. If you look just a little bit further in Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 33, the disciples are disputing among themselves now. What were they arguing about? What were they so argumentative about? On the defense, if you will. They were wanting to know not who's lost, who's saved. No. They weren't talking about people that are sick and afflicted and the problems of that. No, they weren't disputing that. They weren't talking about, you know, the severity of sin and what sin. No, they weren't doing that. They were arguing about who will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. These are grown men. <laughs> this, I mean, it's, it's typical. You would think that in kindergarten. You know, this is mine. I'm the teacher's faith. No, these are grown men. Who will be the greatest? That's not the right question. It doesn't bring them to the right decision and choice. What can we do better? How can we follow Jesus more closely? You know, when you think about the idea of accountability and what that means, the importance of these questions, let me just read you some things to think about. What does that really look like? What does better questions sound like? Maybe things like this. What can I do today? Well, well, this thing is happening, it's, and, and this person, I understand that. But unless you can change somebody, and that's point number two, you can't. What can I do today? What about this? How can I move this forward? Instead of being stuck in a circle, going over and over the same thing, how can I, notice I didn't say we, didn't, notice I didn't say us, how can I, how can we move this forward? How can I better understand you? What can I do right now that could make a difference? If you look in Matthew chapter 5 in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to spend some time here, uh, just briefly, because Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is really a sermon about personal accountability. You don't believe me? Underline the word you. 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 Not they. Not them. You. How should I read the Sermon on the Mount? You should read it personally. He's talking to you. In Matthew chapter 5, and in verse uh, 43, it says, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Let me ask you something. How did you hear that being read to you? What were you thinking about? Were you thinking, why do I have enemies? Why, why, why can't people like me? That's not what Jesus addressed here. <laughs> why won't my enemies leave me alone? That's, that's not what he said here. You've missed what he said. What he's talking about is you. Is you. And me. Look, look, look what he says, and, and so, so personal. Verse 44, love your enemies. Your enemies. You. Bless those who curse you. You. 
Do good to those who hate you. And then pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. He's not talking to they, he's not talking to them, he's not referring to the people that didn't show up, he's not saying that the people that won't listen to what I'm saying. No, he's talking to you. He's talking to us. Those are so important to understand and looking at it in that way. Asking better questions, getting, giving us to better, better choices in our lives. For, for, forget about the person that you think needs to do. Look at you. Look at you. Point number two is this. I, I'm accountable by realizing the only one I can change. It's a simple question, but ask yourself, who can you change? Who can you? Can you change your neighbor? Can you change your spouse? Can you change your friend? Can you change your brother and sister? Who can you change? The only one you can change, truly change, is yourself. Oh, we can encourage, we can beg, we can plead, we can pray for, we can, you know, all these, yes, we, we do those things. But the only one you can change is you. I learned this the hard way in ministry. I'll never forget, it was uh, early years, there was a man that was sick. He needed to go to the hospital. I knew he needed to go to the hospital. He was sick, 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 sick. But he was so stubborn and hard-headed. It was just like, and I was begging him to go for two hours in the trailer that he, I said, you need, let's go. I'll take you. I'll be with you. Let's do, guess what happened? He didn't go. He didn't go. Why? Because he had to decide to go. <laughs> not me. I wanted him to do that. But he was not going to do that. Think about the importance of I'm accountable by I. The importance of that first word. Not they are accountable. You know, they're, they're going to be held. Yes, understand that. But what about you? You see, when I think about when we look at use the word I, it, it, it puts the focus where it should be ourselves. Let me tell you who I'm speaking to, to this morning. You. That's who I'm speaking to. You. Not they, not them, not the people. You and me. You know, when, what does God say when we think about, you know, they, them, and us? He, he, again, going back in the Sermon on the Mount, just, just listen to what Jesus says. Why, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? Why do you do that? And not consider the plank that is in yours. Well, they're, they're, they're not doing things right. Yeah, I, what about the plank in yours? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me remove the speck from your eye when you have a plank in your own eye? The jailer asked the greatest question, the most important question when Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, earthquake took place, jail cells were open, prisoners escaped. He could have, he could have said, when Paul and Silas were with him, he could have said, you know, I, I, I'm a jailer. They are condemned. They were prisoners. They need to do what you're telling me more than me. He didn't say that. Those that are in car, they, they need the gospel. No, he said this statement, this perfect question, verse 30. What can I do to be saved? His concern was not to condemn criminals. His concern are not those who escaped, who should have stayed put because they had been, you know, they were sentenced, they were tried, they were put in a prison. No, he didn't. 
What can I do to be saved? And Jesus is going back his Sermon on the Mount, going back to the you. Verse 22, But I say to you in regards to anger, not to the person who blows their temper, and I was really known for that, I'm saying it to you. I say to you, and it comes from lustful eyes, looking at someone and thinking inappropriate things. I'm saying that to you. If you do not forgive, not willing to forgive, unforgive, I'm saying this to you. You need to do this. Do you understand the lesson that Jesus was giving at that time and for us today? It's not so much about them and they and everyone else in between. It's about you and me. Folks, we can't change other people. We can't do it. We see that today. We have polarizing ideas. We can't change others. But we can change ourselves if we need to be changed. And I have it in the notes. Think about the difference of praying this prayer. Dear God, give me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change. To have the courage to change the things I can. And to have the wisdom to know the difference. Let me tell you a better, more personal, accountable prayer. Same same thought, but notice the slight difference. Dear God, give me the serenity to accept the, the people that I cannot change. The courage to change the one thing I can. And the wisdom to know it's me. It's me. That's personal accountability. That's holding ourselves accountable. Let me tell you something, folks. Either we do that now or we're going to have to do that when we stand before the judgment. Either way, we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do that. The third and final point is this. Not only am I accountable by, accountable by asking better questions, I, I'm also accountable by realizing they're, they're, they're the only one I can change. But I'm also accountable by taking action. I love coming. If you're visiting... I hope you saw busyness when you came in. Because that's what I see. You walk in from the side, you see toilet paper, you see paper towels, you see these box, you see items, you see things, you see action, you see doing. And it's visible. And I like that. In James chapter 2, James gives a scenario... (laughs) And, he, and I, he's very practical. If a brother or sister is destitute in need of food, and you say to your brother or sister in Christ, be warm and well fed, but you do not give that person what is necessary for the body. What does it profit? What does it profit? Listen to me very carefully. It's less profitable to do nothing than to do something and fail. It's less profitable. It's, it's, it's better to be told to wait than to wait to be told. Some things about about taking action, some things I want you to consider is this. Action, even if it leads to a mistake, you fell down, you fell flat on your face, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, what did you learn? You learned something. 
You can grow from that. When we don't do that or inactive, it brings stagnation. I love the story of Peter. And we think Peter walking on water and he began to drown. And Jesus said, oh, oh, little is your faith. But at least he got out of the boat. At least he walked a little bit. At least he tried. What about the others in the boat? What did they do? They didn't do anything. Second thing is action can lead us towards solution. I don't know how we can solve anything if we don't do anything about it. How can you? It doesn't happen. Burying your head in the sand doesn't work. It doesn't work. It won't go away. It won't go away. What are you going to do? In action... Well, it brings us to nowhere and to nothing, and it kind of holds us to our past. Peter did deny Christ, and he went and left and wept bitterly. And I know that left a huge scar on him, and something that he would always remember. There's no question about that. But it led him to a better place to the Peter that we've grown to know and the, the, the growth in Acts 2 and so on, who, who could move mountains and, and, and go play. I mean, such great faith. But it didn't just happen. It took drowning. It took denying to lead him to that point. The last thing about taking action is this. It, 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 it requires courage. It requires courage. One of the definitions of insanity is this. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's, that's crazy to me. But I, 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 don't, I don't... I just... Courage. Take courage. Take courage. God is involved. God is, God is everywhere and God loves and cares for us. Don't forget Him. Take courage. If we don't do that, it, we're just gripped by fear and before you know, we're, we're just nothing but an empty shell. Again, it's... It, 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 Jesus says in, in our English Standard Version, enter the narrow gate, but the way is hard. But it leads to life. It's hard. It is hard to say I'm responsible. It is hard to do that. To, instead of saying I deserve. It, it's hard to keep going on and pressing on. In the, it's hard. I understand, and, and God understands that. It's really hard to not point to someone else when I know they're the problem when I really need to be looking at myself and saying, I am accountable. You could be stuck on that other person, but let me tell you, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you use that, it won't work because you will give an account of the things you have done right now today whether good or bad you will give an account I close with this I began with this question what what's the one thing that will improve the effectiveness of Charlotte Heights if by chance and honestly speaking you were thinking about someone else that's why I gave this sermon. What will improve the effectiveness of Charlotte Heights is not they, it's not them. It's me. Myself. And I. It comes down to me. If I read, if I read the Word correctly, 
I understand what personal response it, it's it comes down to me Alex has selected the appropriate song we're going to stand and sing and the invitation song is for us to examine ourselves to see whether or not we're in the faith I don't know your lives, and I'm not here to know your lives, but God knows your heart. God knows where you're at. And really, it's, it comes down not with me. It comes down between you and God. But we're here to help and assist. We had a Dylan who put on Christ in baptism last week. He did, Dylan did that for Dylan. Not for mom, not for dad, not for friends, not for preach. He did it for him. And his connection to God. Again, the jailer was so right on it. I mean, he, he was more right in asking a better question than the disciples in those moments. What, what must I do? What do I need to do? I know there's a world that's lost. I know there's people that... Are, I understand that. But right now, I need to address myself. Listen to me. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't address yourself, how can you be a good neighbor? You can't. You can't. Whether you need to respond, and we can pray for you, maybe you have questions, you need to ask, that's fine, whether you're online, there's some things, you can reach out to us, that's fine. That's good. See for yourself what God wants for you to do. When you see it in that light, in that way, well, it's more special. And it holds us more stronger when we are tested and tried. If we can help you, responding, rededicating, asking questions, praying, confession, repentance, baptism, whatever, the invitation has been selected song as we all stand and as we sing.
you're here today. Uh, if you're visiting with us, uh, we hope to meet you. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, special visitors today. Uh, Brad Green is here, uh, back here in the back from Mount Dora. Uh, we were with him last night at the dinner for Mount Dora. Uh, it was a great event, uh, so get to meet him. Uh, I hear that in a few weeks he's getting married, uh, so exciting times for him as well. Uh, if you were not able to attend the dinner and would like to contribute, there are some uh, contribution cards out there in the, in the foyer on the table if you'd like to, uh, to do that. Also, uh, special visitors for our family, the Ford family is here today. Uh, Holly's uh, family, from some of them from Mississippi, her mom and dad are here. Uh, and I know there's a hurricane coming, so we're hoping it steers away and, and dies down before they try to travel back. Uh, but hope you can meet them today. Uh, several things going on um, in the in the bulletin. Don't forget the diaper drop uh, through next week. Uh, the bridal shower for Holly Ford this afternoon at two o'clock. Uh, obviously, congratulations to Dylan for being baptized last week. We uh, welcome him. Uh, ladies Bible class is starting up on September eighth, so uh, don't forget that. Uh, which that usually indicates it's towards the end of summer, so uh, starting the fall area. Uh, Chris, the Christmas joy boxes, uh, make sure you bring those back by September 26th. Uh, and then also a last of leaders meeting coming up on September 12th. Uh, we're anxious to get this started back again. Uh, we, we've kind of been on uh, hiatus for a couple of years now with the, with the pandemic, so we're excited to get that uh, going again. Uh, and also in your in your bulletin, there's a list of all the various classes that we have uh, currently going on this fall, uh, the September through November timeframe. So uh, find a class and, and get involved in that as well. Uh, if you will, let's bow as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be here as your church family. Lord, we're we're so blessed to be here and to be able to worship you and we're thankful for Josh and his lesson and that uh, we all hold ourselves accountable for our actions and, and our words and our deeds and that uh, we, we work 
together and to improve and to further your word in this community. Lord, we're thankful for, for all those that have, have brought items for, for assistance in other areas and that it will be put to good use. We're mindful of those that are suffering with illness, whether, whether it be this, through this pandemic or through other illnesses uh, or those that have lost loved ones and just comfort their families and be with them. Lord, just bring us back at, at each time that we need to be here and that we will continue to grow spiritually together. And we're thankful for Jesus and his death on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.